How the average American sees the world map. Oh no, not this again. The US has freedom. Texas is of course Texas. Tacos and uh, substances from here. We're not really sure what goes on in the Caribbean, but they did or might still have missiles there, specifically in Cuba. Hockey and bears and mooses, we know that. Russian observatory state, thank you Alaska. Nothing really, but we want it. We want to buy it from Denmark. Okay, that doesn't even make any sense. There's really only jungles, okay. Empty desert, pretty sure Nigeria is not just an empty desert. Elephants, lions, lemurs, uh, what about the penguins? Pirates, of course. Well, uh, radiation, I mean, is Chernobyl, is that where? Chernobyl, that's not even- All this is basically just wine. The queen, oh no, Ireland's included in that. Volcano, black metal, and Ikea. Beer for Germany? I can think of one other thing. Communists, crime, and vodka. The factory, sushi, and ninjas. Come on, you could've given one for Korea. Noodles! Tech support. Coffee? Out of all things, coffee. Kangaroos, and kiwis, and kiwis. I gotta admit, I do like reviewing these maps because they are always different. There's always something new. Europe's champions of colonization. Uh, maybe we shouldn't be calling it that. Is the total number of colonies out of every European country? Of course, the UK is winning this. Literally, their biggest export in the world has been Independence Days. Even their great rival France came nowhere close to Britain. They didn't even get half as much. I mean, they definitely tried. They just didn't have quite the same luck. Insanely, this map has Portugal beating out Spain. Remember that these two were the original starters of the whole colonization game, but Britain and started playing and they just took things way too far. Italy with seven, aw. Look at Austria and Greece with one. Germany actually tried to do a whole lot of colonization. It was just colonization inside of Europe. Look at little Netherlands punching way above their weight. Meanwhile, the Scandinavians also jumped in. Asking different countries whether they're dog people or cat people. And to my surprise, a majority of people from the US are cat people. Only 36% are dog people. Then again, nine are both and then 7% are none. Meanwhile, in the nation of France, dogs are dominating at a solid 50% too. 10% are both, only 2% of French people said none, so they really like their pets. While India's even more overwhelmingly dog people, 59% is a solid majority. Again, even less reports of both or none from this country. Then there's Germany at 72% cat people. I guess cats are a lot more German in a way. Are all 22% of these dog people out of Germany owners of German shepherds? Japan is the most divided of all though, with 23% of their population saying both. Dog people just barely winning out. Speaking of champions, current world champions in men's sports right now. Of course, the current world champion of ice hockey is Canada. The world's perfectly balanced. Current world championship of football or soccer is Argentina. But wait a second, maybe the world isn't as balanced as I thought because the world champion of cricket is, uh, it's, it's Australia. Sorry to remind India. Wait, Germany has two championships, field hockey and basketball. Meanwhile, Denmark with handball. I didn't even know there was a world championship of that. Hungary with water polo? It is kind of funny how much Japan dominates at baseball, considering that's our American pastime. Man, we're not champions of anything. Maybe this is why we don't allow anyone else to play American football. We don't want that title to get taken from us. The new world map of Google Street View as of 2023. Now, I feel like I reviewed the original map maybe like three or four times over the course of the last couple years. I didn't know this recently got updated. For reference, here was the original, and of course, the most asked question on the internet for a time there was, why was there no Germany? However, that has changed as of the 2023 map. Germany is now here, completely covered, and it looks like they got parts of Belarus as well. They definitely have more of Indonesia covered, as well as almost all of India, which India wasn't even present before. That's huge. Feels like a bit more of Africa has been included, a lot more of Turkey, and just a lot more of the Americas as well, including the US, but also Mexico, Brazil, Argentina. Now remember, this is actually a very important map if you are a fellow GeoGuessr player. I mean, they'll slap you on any road in the world as long as there's Google Street View. So that game just got a whole lot harder. Speaking of American football, how much foot is in American football? Turns out only about 72% of plays include a foot. Yeah, there's really only a kicking of a ball action that happens during punts, field goal attempts, extra points, or kickoffs. It's not even really a quarter of the game includes any feet. And to be honest, I'm surprised by this 17% number. I thought it'd be even lower. Most of the time, it is a kickoff, but there's also, like I said, punts, extra points, and field goal attempts. Now, maybe the original name of football wasn't as weird back in the day because feet have actually been taken out of the game slowly since the 70s. But you know what? 19 to 17% really isn't that significant. So not, not really. The even funnier thing is I don't think really anyone watches American football for the feet part. Like, they probably just skip over that. Just the last play 
the game, maybe? Areas of the US as European countries of equal GDP and corresponding cities. So basically the West Coast is equal to all of Germany's GDP. LA is Berlin. It's an interesting comparison. Meanwhile, San Francisco is Frankfurt. We've got all of Spain's GDP covered from most of Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and a little bit of bits over here. Is this Phoenix as Madrid? The Deep South is basically France. Love this for Louisiana. It's like they're going back to their roots. Just this area covers Austria. All of Ikea and Spotify are basically covered here. The UK is the Rust Belt with Michigan, Illinois, of course, Chicago being London. That's a micro state in Europe, but uh, they're covering a lot more counties here in the US. Greece, this is also a very sparsely populated part of the US as well. There's Belgium and Ireland on the East Coast. The Netherlands going down to Tennessee and Kentucky. Italy, of course, getting very close to New York. And New England is pretty much Poland. Warsaw is Boston, kind of. Wait, no, that's more of here. Oh, Iceland and Hawaii, both are islands, just drastically different types of islands. They do both have volcanoes, just very different biomes. Wow, just these edges are Luxembourg? We should just give Alaska to Bulgaria. I feel like that fits. I had no idea the Northeast actually got broken down into very small parts. Ohio and West Virginia. Good luck being banished there, guys. The differences in types of urbanization. So rural India apparently really likes their dead ends. This looks like a nightmare. You get lost in there forever. Meanwhile, a lot of European cities and their urbanization looks more like this. Not very gridded out. That's what I really want people to notice. It is also kind of like a maze. But that's because those European cities have been built for a really long time. Meanwhile, compare that to American cities, we just have grids. We try our best to keep it, like, interesting by throwing some slanty grids, but it's just grids upon grids. This is also how we like to make our states. Here is the British, which obviously it is a little bit different than the European version, but similar in a way. I notice a lot bigger streets, for sure, and they, they definitely jam, like, more building stuff in there. Then we have Chinese urbanization, so they are weirdly, like, smashing. Are these, like, residential zones? apartments. That is really interesting. Finally, French or specifically Paris. Feels kind of like a cross between, it's not really grids, they're more like triangles. Just lots and lots and lots of triangles. The size of different empires and large countries. Starting off, we have modern day USA at about 4,600 kilometers squared. I mean, it's not squared, it's 46,000 kilometers. Now we're just barely beating out the former Portuguese empire, but never forget how large they got. With the help of their colonies, Brazil, Angola, Mozambique, uh, this time tiny spot in Europe conquered a lot of the world. The French Empire did get bigger than the US, but actually I'm a little bit surprised it didn't get even larger. It's a little bit hard. I mean, they did have French Louisiana for a second there. If you put all of France's territories combined, they would have had a huge, huge empire. Okay, here's France and Madagascar and then all their holdings in Africa. There's the Roman Empire at their greatest extent. Obviously, they controlled pretty much all of Europe and Northern Africa. The Qing Empire or China basically at their height. They're not super far off from this, but yeah, they definitely had a lot more back then. The Islamic Caliphate from about a thousand years ago, stretching all the way from modern day Pakistan, Iran, Turkey, to all of the Iberian Peninsula. And there was the Soviet Union, which, I mean, this existed literally 30 years ago. Such a massive country. It's hard to even grasp such a big place in a modern day world. I mean, they were pretty much like the Mongol Empire in a way, not too far off. And of course, the British, uh, they were extremely large, the largest but not continuous empire. Actually, this labels Mongolia larger but I think it really depends on how you define it. The Mongols were all connected, but the British, you know, obviously had colonies all around the world. Finally, according to this chart, we have the Spanish Empire at its height. Now, this is a little bit hard to say. I mean, there's a lot of claims here. I mean, they were pretty much claiming all of the U.S. I mean, there wasn't really anyone there, though. That's This is an interesting... I've never seen someone define the Spanish Empire at their height being the biggest of all time, but I can see where they got that. There were a lot of empires involved in this. World War One basically started because the Archduke was assassinated. The war would bring the first ever flamethrowers, steel helmets, tank battles, area warfare, gas masks, IQ tests. When you put it like this, it looks like World War I was super one-sided. Remember, the U.S. didn't join till 1917. A lot of these places probably joined a little bit later as well. Mostly fought here, though. Here's the Eastern Front against the Russian Empire. This is before they became the Soviet Union. Well, as they were kind of converting to that whole thing. Once again, Russia taking the most casualties. A lot of that's due to wounded or prisoners of war. 
then it was France, then it was Romania. Oh man, Romania got obliterated. Of course, Serbia, compare that all to the US, only at 8%. The Central Powers as a whole took way more casualties than the Allied Powers though. And the European map before and after, things switched a lot, but don't worry, there was gonna be a sequel. I don't know who would be worried about, I don't, yeah. The world's largest arms exporters. And it is by far and away the USA, we are selling a lot of military stuff. The biggest recipients though is Saudi Arabia and Japan. Then there's Russia at 16%, France at 11. While the British were only exporting 3%, I thought they'd be closer up. This has got to be to a lot of their former colonies, right? Germany, Italy, Spain. China's only at 5. Meanwhile, the 9% comes from the rest of the world. However, South Korea is exporting more and more. To who though? Like Taiwan and Japan? There's actually been a net decrease out of China, Russia, and Germany. Oh, and the UK. Meanwhile, the world's largest arms importers. They're the ones that are taking it in. So even though the US is mostly selling to Saudi Arabia and Japan, India is the number one nation taking it in at 11%. The largest supplier is Russia and Saudi Arabia at 10%. Australia at 5 Oh, we have the number. Okay, so it's USA also with Australia. There's Qatar, China, South Korea. Of course, the USA with South Korea. Egypt and Russia. China and Pakistan kind of got a thing going. The US is really just like selling a lot to our allies. And so there's 34% of the rest of the world not accounted for. That's a lot more countries that are included here. We can't see specifically. These are some really interesting numbers. The largest population of Italian immigrants. Of course, it all started with the first Italian immigrant, Christopher Columbus. So this is Italian ancestry in America. And surprisingly, though we have a lot in the US, it's not number one. There are a lot of Italian immigrants in the East Coast and in a couple other spots like Illinois, Ohio, Florida, and then Nevada. Canada also getting a good amount. The Italians don't like the freezing cold, apparently. Neither do I. Wow, Mexico's got like none. So does Cuba. So does Haiti. So does Costa Rica. It's essentially still none when you get down to Panama, Colombia, Ecuador. Then things get crazy when you get down to Argentina. And this is why if you study Spanish, uh, the Spanish down here sounds really Italian. It's also the southern parts of Brazil as well. Well, and of course, Uruguay. And one of the many reasons for this could be because the Italian language is very similar to Spanish and Portuguese. Like, it's not a problem that they would go to Brazil, a Portuguese speaking country. A lot of Italians can understand still. Same with Spanish. They got these like romance languages going on. Which universities are best going into 2024? This ranking was built off of covering peer assessments, graduation rates, faculty resources, and more. Starting off the list, we have the College of William and Mary. Then there's the University of Minnesota, Northeastern University, Florida State University. Oh, these places are all tied. I'm sure a part of this is also going to be like top bang for your buck too. University of Maryland is top 20 engineering school and 11th in aerospace aeronautical aer aer aeronautical. <laughs> top 10 though, we have Northwestern University, John Hopkins, Brown, Duke, Caltech, Penn, Yale, Stanford, and Harvard tied for third. And then MIT and Princeton University. Fun fact, I have a Princeton University sweatshirt. I wear it um, because I thought it was ironic because I, I dropped out of college twice. I'm, I could never get accepted to Princeton. Princeton has topped these rankings for 13 straight years. However, Harvard is the most affordable Ivy League university at only $59,000 a year. Only $59,000 a year. I'm sending my kids to a community college. Which state poops the most? Now you might be asking yourself, how exactly did we collect this data, Drew? You don't want to know. No, this is based off a nationwide survey. So average number of poops per day. I feel like I've never even really asked myself this question. This really comes down to how many Americans Americans are reporting they're pooping twice a day because the average answer is one clearly and most of the states are reporting one but how many people are saying two is going to pull up the decimal number so I live in Los Angeles we are pooping more than Nevada apparently but not as much as Arizona dang 1.8 poops so almost everyone in Arizona is pooping twice a day what do y'all eat Idaho is though Idaho is at a 2.1 what are they eating in Idaho again potatoes but should we be worried about some of the less pooper states like Missouri they rank last with 1.1 one. That means that some of these people I think are reporting maybe zero. It's possible. Like, that can't be good for your bowels, right? Now the US average is 1.5. So that's a pretty good number. That's 50% saying one and the other 50% of people saying two times a day. Tennessee and New Hampshire right along that average. Those are my state of California. Why do I feel like I can smell something. Alaska pooping way more than Hawaii out here. But poop nation by far is Michigan at 2.1. That means in order to get a 2.1, there was a sizable portion of people in Michigan that were clearly saying three times a day. Three times a day? I'm not saying that's unheard of, of course, but, but to say on average you're doing three, like every day you're doing three times a day. We need to study that. Idaho was close to number one at second place in New Jersey, Iowa, Vermont. For New 
York having so much population, they're kind of lower at the list. So is Florida. This is also an interesting experiment, like how are Americans reporting? Because this is all self-reported data. Like maybe some states don't want to report their accurate numbers. Maybe Michigan is proud of their poops. That's why they were saying, yo, three times a day, dog. I got that good immune system. Meanwhile, Missouri ashamed, possibly. I like how we were given the like exact decibel numbers. I don't know why, just why not? We need a worldwide version of this map. We need to start polling everyone. We must find poop nation somewhere. And big thanks to the patrons. Drew, I'm your dad back with the milk. Look outside. John Denver. Luxembourg lover. I can't sleep without Drew's voice. Aaron F. Amateur archaeology. Fat. Carmel Norwal. Frederick Tiblin. Good old Ryan. Inquisitor. Jack Trayton's annoying friend. Let me know is X10. Best Robert Ryan. E. The Pie. The Sebby, if you hear this, I love you. And why am I doing this?